Hi, I'm Katie. Before I dive into the story, please like and subscribe for more tales like this one. Now let's get started. Growing up with Anna was never easy. She was the golden child, the older sister who could do no wrong in our parents' eyes. And then there was me, the afterthought, always in the shadows. Our relationship? It's a stretch to even call it that. It was more like a long-standing cold war, with me always trying to bridge the gap and Anna finding new ways to keep it wide. Things took a drastic turn when our parents' health started failing. It seemed like in just a blink, they went from being vibrant and jovial to frail and bedridden. That's when the real test came. Despite our strained relationship, Anna and I found ourselves rushing to the hospital on a chilly October evening, the kind where the wind bites at any exposed skin and leaves a chill that seems to seep into your bones. At the hospital, the sterile smell of antiseptic filled the air mingling with the low murmurs of urgent conversations and the occasional beep from the numerous machines. Our parents were in the same room, looking so small and fragile in their respective beds. It was a sobering sight, one that made our past squabbles seem trivial. Anna stood by the window, her posture rigid, her gaze distant. I tried to approach her, to offer some semblance of comfort, maybe even mend things between us. Anna, they need us now more than ever. Can we... Can we just put everything aside? She turned, her eyes cold and unyielding. Save it, Katie. Let's just focus on them, not us. That shut me down. So we sat there, in silence, the kind that's thick and suffocating, as we waited for the doctor's updates. Hours dragged by until our mother finally stirred, beckoning me closer with a frail hand. I leaned in, unsure of what to expect. With what seemed like her last ounce of strength, she whispered a code to me, 4,826. Her voice was so weak, a mere breath, and then she slipped back into unconsciousness. What did she say? Anna's voice cut through the silence like a knife. Nothing. Just, just something between us, I lied, tucking the code deep into the folds of my memory, puzzled by its meaning. The code became my silent obsession as our parents' condition worsened. I turned it over in my mind, at night in the dim glow of hospital lights, during the day as I went about my duties, mechanically, my thoughts elsewhere. It gnawed at me, this mysterious sequence that held a secret I couldn't decipher. Days later, when the inevitable came and our parents passed away, grief was a heavy cloak around my shoulders. But there was no time to truly mourn, not with Anna already taking charge, making arrangements, and shutting me out. I went to the family home the day before the funeral to gather some photos and keepsakes, only to find the doors barricaded. Anna was there, her expression as hard as the new locks on the door. This is my house now, Katie. You should leave. Anna, this is our home. How could you? Our parents left everything to me. There's nothing here for you. One night, as the moon cast eerie shadows on the lawn, I found my way through the backyard to the window that was always jammed slightly open in the summer. Sliding it up, the familiar scent of home rushed over me, but it was marred by the sting of betrayal. Inside, the house was silent as a crypt. I tiptoed through the dark, the numbers bony 4,826, burning in my brain. When I reached our father's study, the moonlight spilled across the painting that had always fascinated me as a child. I slid the painting aside, revealing the safe. My hands trembled as I entered the code. With a heavy click, the safe swung open, revealing its secrets. A stack of documents, and atop them, a letter in our mother's handwriting addressed to me. Everything here is for you, Katie. I've protected this till now. Forgive me. As I flipped through the documents, the truth leaped out at me. Birth certificates, a will, and letters. Evidence that Anna was my half-sister, and that our mother had left the entire estate to me. I gathered everything, stuffing it into my bag, a mix of triumph and sorrow swirling inside me. Suddenly, the light flicked on. Anna stood in the doorway, her eyes wild. Stealing now, are we? What a low life you turned out to be. I'm not stealing, Anna. These belong to me. Mom left everything to me. Look at these. I thrust the documents at her, but she slapped them away, her fury unbound. Lies. She would never. I'm calling the police. You can call them, but it won't change the truth. Mom left everything to me because you... You're not her daughter, not fully. Her face twisted in rage as she lunged for me, her hands clawing. I dodged, 
heart pounding, the documents crinkling under my arm. You won't get away with this. I'll make sure of it. With that, she stormed out, leaving me alone in the study, the weight of everything crashing down on me. I knew then that this was only the beginning of a larger battle, one I had to win, not just for my inheritance, but for my parents' memory. I slipped out of the house as the first hints of dawn crept over the horizon, the documents secure, my resolve firmer than ever. This wasn't just about money. It was about righting a deep familial wrong. You're a liar and a thief, Katie. You can't just waltz in here and claim everything. Anna, it's all right here in black and white. These documents prove everything. In a flash, Anna lunged at me, her hands outstretched, aiming for the papers clenched in my grasp. I stepped back, my heart racing, barely dodging her grasp. This is mine. Our parents would never have left me out. Read the will, Anna. It's not about what they left for you. It's about what mom left for me because, because you're not her biological daughter. The revelation hit Anna like a physical blow, her face contorting with a mix of confusion and rage. She paused, her breath heavy, eyes wild with disbelief. That's impossible. You're lying. I tried to maintain my composure, holding the documents out of her reach. It's the truth, Anna. Look at the birth certificate and the letters. Mom explained everything here. She glanced at the papers, then back at me, her rage boiling over. With a scream, she charged, knocking the papers from my hand and sending us both crashing to the ground. We scrambled, a tangle of limbs on the cold floor of our childhood home, each fighting desperately for the upper hand. You've ruined everything. I'm protecting our parents' wishes. In the chaos, I managed to push Anna off and grabbed the documents. I darted towards the door, her enraged shouts echoing behind me. I'll destroy you for this, Katie. I didn't look back. Once outside, the cool air hit my flushed cheeks as I ran to my car, documents in hand, and drove off with tears streaming down my face. The weight of the betrayal, the family secrets now unearthed, felt overwhelming. I needed to secure my safety and the inheritance legally before Anna could do anything drastic. Once I reached a safe distance, I pulled over and called a family lawyer, my hands still trembling. I need help. My sister. She's trying to take everything our parents left, but I have the documents proving it's mine. Can we meet? The lawyer's calm voice was a balm to my frayed nerves. Yes, Katie. Let's meet tomorrow morning. Bring everything you have. That night, alone in my apartment, I pored over every letter, every legal document, each word penned by my mother confirmed the sad truth about Anna's heritage and my sole inheritance. The loneliness of the night enveloped me, a stark contrast to the chaos at the house. But within that solitude, a plan began to form. A plan to secure my legacy and ensure Anna could never threaten it again. I packed a bag, preparing to stay somewhere safe until the legal matters were settled. As I zipped it closed, I steeled myself for the coming battle. This was no longer just about money or property. It was about justice for my mother's wishes and securing my future from the grasping hands of someone I no longer recognized as my sister. The day of the funeral was gray and somber, the sky weeping over our parents as much as any of the mourners gathered at the graveside. Everyone was there, the whole extended family and a smattering of old friends, all exchanging quiet condolences. The tension in the air was palpable, a silent storm brewing as Anna paced like a caged animal, her eyes darting around nervously. I can't believe you're showing your face here after what you've done. Anna, this is not the place. We're here to honor our parents, not fight. Her laugh was sharp, bitter. Honor? You don't know the meaning of the word. As the eulogy began, I tried to focus on the memories of our parents, their laughter, their unconditional love. But Anna's presence charged with silent fury, was a constant distraction. As soon as the formalities were over, she made her move, her voice loud enough to turn every head in our direction. This is all a sham. Katie is trying to steal everything our parents worked for, people murmured, their eyes shifting between us. I felt the stares, the suspicion. It was exactly what Anna wanted. Please, let's handle this privately. Like you handled sneaking into our house or stealing our inheritance? I took a deep breath, willing my voice to remain steady. Everything I've done is in accordance with our mother's wishes. That's a lie! Before I could react, 
Anna had pulled a gun from her purse, the metallic glint cold and menacing. Gasps erupted around us, and someone screamed, shattering the mournful peace of the graveyard. Anna, put the gun down. This isn't what mom and dad would have wanted. You deserve nothing, Katie. The standoff felt like an eternity, every second stretching longer as I faced the barrel of the gun. It was only when the police, called by a quick-thinking relative, arrived that Anna's resolve faltered. They shouted for her to drop the weapon, their own guns drawn and ready. With a cry of rage and despair, Anna threw the gun down, sobbing as the officers handcuffed her. She screamed accusations and curses as they led her away, her words echoing off the tombstones. As the chaos settled and the crowd dispersed, whispers followed me like shadows. I stood there, alone, the weight of Anna's public breakdown heavy on my shoulders. The family looked on, their faces a mixture of pity, confusion, and fear. Driving away from the cemetery, the lawyer's words from our earlier conversation replayed in my mind. We'll get this settled, Katie. You're the rightful heir. Don't worry. But as I looked in the rearview mirror, the image of Anna being led away in handcuffs haunted me. I knew this was far from over. Despite the legal assurances, the battle for peace and acceptance within the family had just begun. Anna's actions had not only cemented her fate, but had also cast a long, dark shadow over our family's legacy. The road ahead was clear, but fraught with challenges, and I braced myself for whatever was to come, determined to uphold my parents' true wishes and restore some semblance of harmony to the fractured remains of our family. The days following the funeral felt both long and fleeting, each passing with a mix of relief and sorrow. With Anna now confined, the path to claiming my inheritance was cleared, but the weight of our fractured relationship lingered like a heavy fog. Sitting across from the lawyer in his office, the final paper spread between us, the reality of it all began to sink in. You're now officially the sole heir, Katie. Everything has been transferred to your name. Thank you. I just wish it hadn't come to this. It's unfortunate, but you've handled everything with grace. As I signed the last document, a sense of closure washed over me. It was done. The estate, the funds, the properties. All mine, as my parents had wished. But the wealth felt hollow without family to share it with. The betrayal and the ensuing battle had taken its toll, leaving me weary and alone. Leaving the lawyer's office, I wandered through the city, the noise and bustle a stark contrast to the silence of my heart. People laughed and chatted around me, their lives untouched by the drama that had consumed mine. It was then I realized I needed a fresh start, away from the memories and the judgment of those who knew me only as the sister of the woman who'd pointed a gun at her own family. I need to move, somewhere far, where none of these things matter. The decision brought a new wave of energy. Within weeks, I arranged everything and found myself on a plane, bound for a small town in another country. The quaint streets, the friendly faces, they offered the promise of anonymity and peace. As I settled into my new home, the nights were the hardest. The quiet was a reminder of the isolation I'd felt, even in a crowd of relatives. But as days turned into weeks, the community around me proved kind and welcoming. I opened a small bookshop, something I'd always wanted to do, using part of the inheritance. It wasn't just a business, it was a new chapter, a place where stories healed others and in turn, healed me. I always believed books could save us, and here I am, hoping they'll save me too. My days filled with the smell of old books and coffee, interactions with customers who cared more about literature than my past. Yet at night, I'd sit by the fire, a book in hand, and reflect on the journey. Anna's actions had forever altered the course of my life, but in this quiet solitude, I found a strength I hadn't known I possessed. The betrayal, the fear, the loss, it had all led me here, to a place where I could rebuild and redefine myself away from the shadows of my family's legacy. Sometimes I wondered about Anna, confined to a place where her demons could no longer harm anyone else. I hoped she found some peace, some resolution, but I knew our paths were meant to diverge, crossed by fate, but separated by choices. As the seasons changed, so did I. The bitterness faded, replaced by a cautious hope. The community embraced me, and I them. My story, once defined by my sister's betrayal, was now a narrative of my resilience. 
I've learned that starting over isn't about changing just your place, but also your perspective. Here, in this small town, surrounded by strangers who know nothing of my past, I am not Katie, the sister of a woman confined by her own actions. I am just Katie, the bookshop owner, a friend, a part of something new. And in that newfound identity, I found peace, a peace that the bustling streets of my old city could never have offered. Here, in this quiet corner of the world, I was safe, not just from Anna, but from the past itself, free to live and love and thrive in a way I had never thought possible. Now that our story has come to an end, I have a question for you all. If you were in Katie's shoes, would you have left everything behind to start anew? Or would you have stayed to confront your past and the people in it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to the channel for more intriguing tales. Your support helps us bring more content like this to you.